We are back for episode 29 of the weekly show on prototype railroads to educate the model railroader on the real railroads and give them ideas. Right now we are going through various railroads talking about their customers, route, history, and motor power. How detailed this is depends on what I can find online and how accurate depends on what was available at the time of recording. These are often filmed in bulk with three to six videos filmed in one day. On this day I'm only filming one video because I only need to film one to make it until next time I'm filming because I have two more after this week's after the episode I'm filming this on the week of episode 26 episode 26 goes up tomorrow so 27 28 are already filmed I just need a 29 today's first subject is the Chattahoochee Industrial Railroad based out of Cedar Springs Georgia unfortunately this is also a railroad with very little history available it only runs 27 miles and hauled almost 20,000 cars in 2002 when it was owned by Georgia Pacific, which is the largest customer. The Genesee Wheeling purchased the CIRR in 2003 along with other Georgia Pacific holdings and has, has operated ever since. They operate between their Hilton and Hilton, Georgia interchange with the Bayline Railroad and Hilton and Albany and their Safford, Georgia interchange with CSX Transportation with the rail car storage between and, and a couple customers. <coughs> In Hilton, Georgia, the CIRR leaves the HAL in Chat, heading south under the Columbia Highway and runs along GA Georgia Route 370, heading south to Cedar Springs. They have a small two-track yard and a spur to a demolished industry where they store cars and, 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 when the main, and then the main continues south to the huge Georgia Pacific Container Board plant just west of Liberty, Georgia. This would be Cedar Springs, basically. They have a sm <clears throat> Approaching this plant is sidings for storage of open uppers and boxcars. There used to be a track going off the main to reach where the CIR used to deliver the coal to the plant. These tracks are overgrown, however, and the coal piles look fairly abandoned. They deliver coal to another part, part of the plant at this point. There is a small building separate from the plant between the railroad and the Chattahoochee River that receives covered hoppers and tank cars. It did not have any labeling. The main curves around the south side of the plant with a three-track yard inside the curve and a siding with a couple crossovers on the outside. Here there is a spur going north into the plant where the CIR delivers the coal and there is a small active coal pile here. Just east of the spur is a paper warehouse where three tracks are used to load boxcars or container board. East of the plant is four sidings for storing boxcars and the main turns back south to run along Georgia 370 once again. The next feature is their only other customer, Nucor or Tubular, the only labeled customer. That business, that building between them, between the power, between their main and the river, probably is another industry, but I'm not sure what it is. It could be part of the paper plant, paper mill. Uh, this is accessed by a facing point switch to a lead that runs along County Road 271, which only exists to reach that business. It ends after the entrance, about 250 feet from the river. Nucor receives gondolas of pipe on two tracks. There is a building with two tracks outside and three inside, labeled as Georgia Pacific Wooden Fiber, which I thought might be a paper warehouse, another paper warehouse, but it is actually the engine house for the Chattahoochee Industrial Railroad. Uh, it's got a bunch of boxcars there, so they must be a car shop as well, or they use it for storage because they don't have very much, uh, very many locomotives anymore. Uh, next is the C is the Chattahoochee Industrial's largest yard, which has seven tracks counting the main, and then the main crosses C. Williams Road to reach the Y in Safford, where the CIRR meets the CSXT. Our second subject today is the Chattahoochee Bay Railroad, a Piper Railroad operated by the Bayline Railroad. This railroad started operations in 1900 as the Chattahoochee and Gulf Railroad between Columbia and Lockhart, Alabama, as a subsidiary of the Central of Georgia. It then became part of the Southern and then finally Norfolk Southern before being sold off between Hilton, Georgia and Dothan, Alabama on March 7, 2003 when the Chattahoochee and Gulf Railroad emerged as Gulf and Ohio, emerged as Gulf and Ohio property along with the H&S Railroad which interchanged with the C&G in Dothan, Alabama. The G&W in 2003 bought the Chattahoochee Industrial which connected to the C&G in Hilton, Georgia and the Bay Line in 2005 which connected to the H&S. Therefore, in 2006, GWI purchased the H&S Railroad and Chattahoochee and Gulf from Gulf and Ohio, merged the two to form the paper railroad Chattahoochee Bay Railroad and started having the Bay Line operate the roughly 28-mile route. 
This allows an all-GNW route for container board heading between the mill at Cedar Springs and the, GIR, uh, the CIIR across the Chat and Bay and Bayel to the port at Panama City, Florida. The chat tracks handle roughly 5,500 cars a year, which includes traffic between the HIL, BAL, and CIRR. In Hilton, Georgia, the chat main leaves the interchange with HIL and CIRR and heads west, roughly paralleling the Columbia Highway, and crosses the Chattahoochee River into Alabama behind AFC Grain, which is the first industry. The trailing point switch here leads to two tracks for handling a covered hoppers. The building is an elevator, single grain bin with spa the build the buildings is a buildings are a grain elevator, single grain bin with space for three more, a metal barn, and a long Quonset hut. The chat main curves around through the woods south of Columbia, Alabama, instead of going through the village. Southwest of Columbia is a long industrial branch heading south. This is used for car storage today. At the end of this is where there used to be an industry and there is a spur at the Farley nuclear power plant. There is a center cab switcher on the tracks down there on Google Maps, but its purpose I can't determine. The chat leaves the Columbia area and winds through the woods, passing through the grade crossing called Williams, the village of Webb, and then finally reaches Dothan, Alabama, where they cross the CSX via an overpass and have a couple sidings approaching the Dothan Diamond Railroad crossing where the Bay Line crosses and connects with the chat main. The chat main continues beyond the diamond to reach a small yard with three stub tracks and two double-ended tracks. They keep mates away equipment on one stub track. Across the main from the yard, a spur goes into a long curved shed. The business that is connected to the shed is not labeled, so what its purpose is, I can't determine. There was not an industry list available for the chat or, ba or bale. The main then crosses the depot off main, crosses East Main Street, a.k.a. US 84, and passes through the business district of Dothan before turning south. Southwest of Dothan, off Taylor Road, behind Sabelle Steel, is a large amount of trackage filled with freight cars, mostly covered hoppers and boxcars. This is a car repair shop and was the main traffic of the railroad that ran this section of the chat. Beyond this, the main is used for storage and ends at a yard that is wet, that's west end is overgrown. Covered hoppers are shoved right up to the weeds. The switches are completely buried in brush. This is the end for the Chattahoochee Bay Railroad's tracks. The section from Dothan to the yard just west of the repair shop is all that remains of the Hartford and Slocum Railroad, also referred to as H&S Railroad, until August 30, 2006, when it was acquired by GWI and merged into the chat. For motor power, the Chattahoochee Bay Railroad has no locomotives assigned to it. The Chattahoochee Industrial does, but some of these are on other properties. GWI often switches locomotives around between properties and does not change the herald each time they move the locomotives between each time they move the locomotive. When the Buffalo and Pittsburgh received their six their received their XS and NS SD sixty M and SD sixty I units, a bunch of their rebuilt SD forty fives were moved to other properties, including the Georgia Central. Who was the Georgia Central? These the units used by their rebuilt SD forty five meh. The units used by Chattahoochee Industrial include, included a small fleet of seven Elko RS1 road switchers, which of course have been re, all been retired. They also have operated four, two former LNN slugs rebuilt from RS3s, SW7 and SW9 switchers, which have been sold off, and various Jeeps. GP10 number one is now at the Oklahoma Railroad Museum in Muskogee, Oklahoma, where it remains in the CIRR paint, which is white at the time. <coughs> 38... Uh, um, no. The CIR also operate, and it said seven, it's actually, it's actually eight Alco RS ones. Number three, acquired from the ASAB, that's Atlantic and St. Andrews Bay, I believe, if I remember correctly, was an odd locomotive. Atlanta and St. Andrews Bay. Is it Atlanta or Atlantic? I can't remember. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Look at a previous episode. It was built with a lower short hood and odd-looking windows. This unit still is used, but is now Conrad Yelvington Distributors 275 at their Ocala, Florida facility, still in CIRR paint. Number 38 came from WATC and was sold to Conrad Yelvington, where it became number 293. This unit was out of service and was being scrapped at Orlando, Florida in 2014. Four more RS1s were CIRR 97, 115, 118, at 382, these were all acquired used. 97 became Conrad Yelvington 292 and was last seen in Orlando in 2021. Number 115 was last seen in the Chattahoochee Industrial in 1986. Number 118 became Conrad Yelvington Murder 294 and was used in Jacksonville, Florida for many years before being heading south on a CSX train in 2017. It hasn't been photographed since. 
this unit is a twin to the former CI CIRR number 3 as they both were originally ASAV units. Number 382 is last photographed in a storage line at Cedar Springs in 1991. Number 912, another former ASAB unit with the lower short hood, was the last photographed in ASAB paint in 1986. The final RS1, CIRR number 111, came from the Louisiana Midland who acquired it from the GMNO. Serving from 1980 to 1991, it was last photographed in 1991. The CIRR operated a pair of older switchers as well. SW7 number 11, which came from the a ALM, it's Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, I believe, or is it Missouri? This is going out of focus again. Hey, focus. It's not going to focus. Yeah. Uh, was sold to the Quincy Railroad out in California, was last photographed in 2013. SW9 number 12 also came from the ALM. It was sold to Dom Tar, where it was last photographed in Ashdown, Arkansas in, in 2013. Uh, the CIR acquired two road slugs from TTI. Built as LNN RS3s, these were made into yard slugs by the LNN and then acquired by TTI, who re-geared them into the yard slugs by the LNN, who then acquired by TTI, who re-geared them into road slugs. These units, which were CIRR 89 and 90, have been repainted in GWI colors and rebranded as Meriden Bigby number 901 and the Bayline number 902. CIRR SW 1504 or number 1541, acquired from the NDM, is now Little Rock and Western number 1541 and serves the LRWN. CIRR has owned four SW 1500s of the years. Number 1500, last seen in 2012, was at that time rail link 1500 serving in Calvert, Alabama. Number 1505 was last photographed in 2018. Number 1554 was formerly A.N. Appalachia and Northern, number 719, and has been serving the Valdosta Railway since 2019. Number 1555 was formerly A.N. number 716 and is back on home rails. The A.N. Railway is CIRR number 1555. GP15T number 1598 is serving the Bayline. GP10 number, number 1810 is now First Coast number 1810 and was repainted from ADN to GWI paint in 2019. So, I mentioned on, uh, it was the, when I'm filming this, it was the Sunday before this was Jason's week, I mentioned that the 1810 had lasted until 2016 in ADN paint, but no, it actually lasted until 2019. I there's two locomotives that were repainted around the same time, and one of them was in 2016 and one of them was 2019, and I couldn't remember which one it was. So it lasted even longer. GP10 number 1811 was last photographed serving the Golden Isles Terminal in 2010, and GP7 number 1830 was last photographed in Muskogee, Oklahoma, owned by Georgia Gulf Corporation Palaquamine Division. This concludes the episode on these two railroads. As for what the Chattahoochee Industrial uses for power, it seems that it likely could be anything. Other units have been reassigned, and LRWN number 1542 hasn't been photographed since it was on the CIRR in 2013. Last, next week will be on the Alabama and Gulf Coast Railway, which is another GWI property.